time that America refused to give the Negro any land. Through an act of Congress, our government was giving away millions of acres of land in the West and the Midwest, which meant that it was willing to undergird its white peasants from Europe with an economic floor. But not only did they give the land, they built land-grant colleges with government money to teach them how to farm. Not only that, they provided county agents to further their expertise in farming. Not only that, they provided low interest rates in order that they could mechanize their farms. Not only that, today many of these people are receiving millions of dollars in federal subsidies not to farm, and they are the very people telling the black man that he ought to lift himself by his own bootstraps. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's the Mother's House Podcast, and I am Deshaun. My name is Corey. What's going on, family? Peace to the family out there. What's up, cuz? Uh, not in chilling on this MLK Day Eve. Martin Luther King birthday. Happy Martin Luther King Day, cuz. Happy MLK Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> we got an interesting show. I think today is his actual birthday, too, right? Yeah, today is his actual birthday. Yeah. His birthday was on. Today is what? Well, the 15th, yeah. Me and Mel Cody, it's going to fall on his actual birthday. Yeah. Yeah, when the actual fall on his birthday. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so probably when y'all hearing this right now, it's, it's his birthday, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. it is. Actually, it's, um, boom. Well, a lot of cattle for the animals. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, this basically is one of our light bulbs. I want to start doing these things where we do, uh, you know, honoring and remembering the ancestors. Okay. And it, we'll call it uh, light and candle moments. Or what I used, what I, you know, the things I used to post on Facebook when, whenever my my brother or my father or mother birthday come around. Oh, come think through. The light and candle moment. Candle light like visual. Kind of that into, do that for every big ancestor or ancestors that we all want to recognize. Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, so we we'll do one on Mark the game. Huh? Said, come through candlelight visual. Candlelight visual. So we're gonna light a candle for the ancestor, man. Let them know we still burn a candle for him. for the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Let's go ahead and light them candles, white candles for him. So, Johnny, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King birthday is today. Um, in, in lieu of the uh, a lot of crazy stuff happened over this weekend. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know. Donald Trump comments to, you know, white people beating up on black women, a lot of different things. But we're going to focus on what if Martin Luther King Jr. was still here today? What would this world look like? What would this country look like? Where would our mindsets and energy would be behind? You dig what I'm saying? What would our focus be on? And uh, let's build from there. So I'm gonna let you go ahead and start with with your ideas and what you know about Martin Luther King. Um, things, new things that you probably know, figured out about Martin Luther King in recent years. I'm still learning the new things about Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, and you know, making every Evans, Ida B. Wells. I learn new things every day about the about right. our heroes. I mean, I don't know everything about Martin Luther King. You know what I'm saying? I didn't like take on MLK studies class, which they probably should have, by the way. But um. <laughs> But, um, I mean, you know, I know pretty much what everybody else know. Martin Luther King, I knew he was from Georgia, Atlanta. He went to Morehouse. Um, I, I know that he was much more radical in his later years. Yes. Like his yes. last couple of speeches, he talked about going to Congress and getting a check for, um, you know, for black people, for all the stuff that we've been through, because he knew that we were supposed to have stuff and we were, we were supposed to have what other people had as far as like there were different acts that were passed that held white people but black people were excluded from right he was up on his political game um and I felt like Dr. Martin Luther King was very um strong he had to be you know what I'm saying to go through all the things he go th- went through you know he was in jail like over 30 times and you know he was really he was really about that <laughs> about that life like that real yeah. life yeah. activist yeah. stuff. And uh, back then, it was a different time, you know. 
maybe maybe if Martin Luther King was still alive, we would be more <laughs> radical. Maybe we would be, you know. I think that poor people march and campaign that he was pushing, it would have been a big monumental. It would have shaped the framework of black people, not just giving up their ownership. Because he, he was all about, you know, they like to paint the picture that he was the man that was pushing integration. He was cool with it, but later in part of his years, he realized he believed in black folks to a burning house because they was going to use that to exploit bad people's dollars which they doing now to us to this day. I think if Martin Luther King Jr. was still living, he would have been able to correct that. You know what I'm saying? Not to the sense that where he'd be like, you know, we don't need to integrate at all, but he's going to be like, black people need to get these things. They need to get reparations. You know what I mean? Right. I kind of somewhat think if Martin Luther King was able to still live, he would have been able to push for reparations and had a stronger fight. Would we have gotten it? I don't know. I we think we'll be in a fight, but we will be a lot fucking closer. Today. Right. I think we would have still been fighting for it. We wouldn't have. We almost forgot about it in this day and age. Right. I think it would have. You know, if you don't get it on the first vote, you would have been coming back to the second vote, and then the third vote, and then the fourth vote. It would have been something that we would have stayed with because he had everybody kind of united. He had the he had the minds and hearts of a lot of black folks, a lot of people. Um. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the country and the people across the globe had to, he had a lot of minds and hearts of people and they would listen and not just listen and follow his move but they would listen and, and get knowledge and, and understanding of how this political system works and how they exploit the people you know what I'm saying um, one of my favorite speeches is his poor people's campaign when he was speaking on that um, if Martin Luther King Jr. was still living to this day um, he would be 89 years old Right. That's not that's old, but he'd still probably be active if he was in good health. I mean, and then that's old today, but you gotta think he died at thirty nine. So he died like I mean, fifty years ago. So imagine Martin Luther came through like the seventies and the eighties and the nineties and the early you know what I'm saying? Like all of that time having a real life Martin Luther King. I think his kids would have been acting better too. They've been acting yeah, up ever since. Like they are now. Right. Oh. Um, man, I, even though I love his daughter, uh, what her name, Bernice, the one that passed away. Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 I love her. But the one that's still rocking now, they just, they trash. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say they but, trash, uh, but um, I don't know. They, they just be, they be do, doing a lot of stuff. They be doing a lot. Uh, they be doing so much. But, um, you know, I, I just wish that. So do we need somebody like Martin Luther King? Do we need a figure of sorts to kind of lead? Or do you think... Who? Oh my gosh. I knew he was going to say that. (laughs) So do you think... Okay, well, if you want to go that route, do you think Umar Johnson is necessary? Honestly, be quite 100% honest with you. When Martin Luther King came in the scene, it wasn't like it was just him, you know, on the scene. Well, you know, you had the Malcolm X, you had to make Evers, you had the, um, what's the young brother that came under Martin Luther King? Uh, Stokely Carmichael? Right. Uh, uh, you had a lot of different people who was out there and they're very outspoken. And after Martin Luther King, you got the Black Panther movie from with you, Huey P. Newton to, to Fred Hampton. Right, and you know, those are all they, leaders. They still have a place. Right, those are all leaders. So do we know Those are all leaders. Leaders. Like, um, but at the same time, they wasn't on leading on. I guess you could say they were leading on in, in certain different facets of groups, you know. But at the same time, they was. I think Martin Luther King was still living, and Malcolm X was still living. They would have worked together. It would have been a bigger. It would have had a great impact on the black people, black population. It would have helped us stay more together. Drugs. Epidemic wouldn't have been as uh, evasive and as destructive as it has been in our communities. Um, and I don't think it because these two men individually, but it because the message and the teachings these men were pushing and inspiration these men were pushing, it would it continue to inspire the other preachers and other public speakers to continue that same thought process and fight. You know what I'm saying? Right. When they passed away, those leaders' ego started coming more into place. It kind of caused a disruption and, you know, a lot of different things drugs from the drugs epidemic to Quarantine Pro, all these different things came and shaked up the whole black community 
after these brothers died. So now we have Dr. Umar Johnson. You got the uh, Tariq Nasheed, if you want to consider him a pub, you know a black leader. Um, I mean, hell, anybody with some YouTube black followers black. can be a black leader nowadays. Shit, you got to be black leaders, Deshaun. So and you said what? <laughs> I said, me and you on black, black right. leaders because we got a platform. If you got a YouTube channel, you got you a, um, an Instagram account, you can be a leader. Yeah, <laughs> You're much. an influencer. <laughs> Marcus King would have an Instagram. <laughs> would you follow MLK on Instagram? I would. I'll be here for them quotes. I'll be here for them quotes every day. Reposting and retagging. I'll be reposting all them quotes. Every damn day. I'll be at his uh his live, his uh YouTube live. <laughs> he <laughs> goes, <laughs> he talking slow. Oh shoot, I'll be watching every single one too. No, uh, be 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 quiet out of town. You gonna get bored. You gonna be like, man, he talking too damn slow. Get no, uh, but they said Dr. Martin Luther King, come on. <laughs> but he was like a really good orator though. Yeah, he was. He like was. he had a a powerful voice. He was a preacher, so he had a preacher. preacher. Voice. Yeah. A lot of preachers, you know, them old school preachers. They had them powerful voices. They had their voices. They voice speak truth back yeah. in the day. They, they fall into love with the money. That's the one thing that Martin Luther King didn't necessarily do. He never fell in love with the money. He fell in love with the power, with the moon. You know what I mean? What do you think Martin Luther King would think about Umar Johnson and Tariq Nashi and <laughs> the pills and Sinetta and I all think of he the. Would love the pills. As well as Malcolm X. What do you. Love all Kind of like same thing with uh, Dr. James Small. Dr. James Small is an elder in the community that all of them look up to. Um, I think he would uh, still have love for him, but he would have a sit down with each one of them. Right. You know, pull him to the side. Let me holler at you, young brother. You know what I mean? Now, would they bring him that same opportunity to do that? Because I think uh, Umar Johnson don't really respect Dr. Martin Luther King as much as he does Malcolm X. So if Malcolm X was living, he probably sit down with Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. But why he don't like Martin Luther King? I don't know. I ain't saying he don't like Martin Luther King. I'm saying he probably have he'll actually listen to Malcolm X over Martin Luther King. And who who's to say what where their minds would be now? Because that's a they died that's so young. Saying, you look at you look at um, Muhammad Ali. Mm-hmm. And um, in his later years, he was. You know, but that's again, that's how the media portray these people. Our legends, our greatness, our, our, our heroes, they portray them as like when, Mar- when Malcolm X, when Muhammad Ali was outspoken, didn't hold his tongue from nothing, they hated him. Right. But when he became, Ill, you, know, yeah. you know, crippled with Parkinson's and everything, they loved him. They were like, he's the best thing ever. You know what I'm saying? He's the champ. He wasn't really talking that, he wasn't really talking that fire no more. Right. Cause he couldn't. Right. Um, I don't know. I don't think. I don't, I don't see Martin Luther King waving. He don't seem like the type of man that would wave. I waving. felt like he would have kept fighting until, and I think the government thought that too. That's why I was like, oh hell no. That's why they killed him. Yeah. Cause he wasn't going to stop until black people felt the felt the liberation. He had a message. He had a vision. He had a message, and he was hoping and grip to make his show is seen. Right. Would he be proud to see that young black boys and black girls are dating and interracial dating and all that? I think he saw beyond this that. You didn't want to say it wasn't even about that for him. I think he was like liberation for that man. Let them have the same rights to live just as much as a white person. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Get to know Dr. Martin Luther King. It's almost like I want to go back and really learn yeah. who he was. Right. As well as Coretta Scott King too. Coretta Scott King, yeah, yeah. And Malcolm X. I would have had a. Uh, I think I had an opportunity to meet her. Oh, you should have took that. I think I did have a meet yeah, your ass meet her. But I never went because um my dad was in the hospital. No, sorry. My dad, my dad being in the hospital stopped a lot of stuff. I couldn't go to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't go to Africa. I couldn't go nowhere. But it was my decision. My dad was like, "Don't go." Right, nah, it felt wrong for me to leave my father in the hospital. I'd be out, you know, living. Well, even though, uh, that's how I say 2020. I ain't about to go my right. campaign. But anyway. Uh, but at the same time, um, Coretta Scott King was really, she had a strong, she the one that warned us about um, Steve Bannon. Was it Steve Bannon? Who 
all that damn senator is out now. She was like talking about he been he been a racist. Um, it's on the, the Trump Academy cabinet. What do you think? Is it Steve Bannon? Y'all let, let me know in the comment section who the guy is, because she already spoke out against this cabinet. You know, uh, she would not. They would not be here for no damn Trump. All right. Oh hell no. They would not be here. For How Trump. do you think? I don't even think they'll be a Trump presidency. How do you think they would feel about Obama? That's a good question. Um, I think Dr. Martin Luther King, just like everybody else, be excited for it. Well, do you think Obama will still be Obama? Not even Obama. Will he be president if Dr. King was here? Do you think Dr. King could have ran for president? I don't think he would win. I think he would got murdered then. Oh yeah. <laughs> if he ran for president. But what'd you ask okay. about Obama? Huh? What'd you ask about Obama? Um, I don't know what you asked me about Obama. Um, how they will feel? I think that like like everybody else, everybody else and their mama was excited for Obama when he first won, but when he started seeing the politics, if if everything played out just like I had been played out, he wouldn't be a fan of Obama. Yeah, he would no. spoke out against Obama. He'd be like Tavis Smiley and uh. Cordell West against Obama. I think they would have spoke out way earlier, and I think Obama would have needed to win their approval to. Yeah. Because I think Martin Luther King and Malcolm X were like. Oh, they both, yeah, they would have called him out. Yeah, real I think they would have like, like, oh hell nah, he's you a phony. Them for, before you start thinking about campaigning for presidency. Right. Like, if you can't get their approval, don't even think about the black vote. That probably be with everybody too. Like shit. Right. If they don't like you, goddamn, you might as well <laughs> sit your ass down like somewhere. You. We ain't gonna like you. It's the kid of rocks. Right. But you know, we all know the presidency is chosen, like not not sold. And I don't see Martin Luther King being uh like an Oprah Winfrey, the person that plays, he knew politics too damn well to play their tricks. Right. I don't think he was a oh, fan, and I don't. And he was more so about helping black people. I think I don't think he was a fan of what all the presidents had to do you know that's a it's just a game I think he didn't want to be a part of yeah he seemed like he couldn't stand the fact that okay we gotta help the white we gotta we gonna make we gonna fix the, the like um the civil rights movement instead of everything going to the black folks that Martin Luther King was pushing most of the resources and um the benefits got pushed down for white women right. and to Latino people and other people ethnic groups or Subgenre of minority groups outside of African Americans. And African Americans always got short, yeah, hit with a short straw with it. Right. Obama, um, Martin Luther King was not pleased with that at all. That's why he started the Poor People's Campaign. Hmm. Martin um, Luther King. Dr. Martin Luther King was always a soldier, he was always a fighter. Um, and he was a father, he was a man. I think, like you said, uh, I think Martin Luther King Jr. was a man of great integrity and at the same time he was a man he wasn't nobody that probably couldn't take a joke <laughs> you know somebody that you can't he's not uh, and that's another thing I can't stand people who put, put men on pedestals of godhood and when I say godhood like they can't have no flaws right right he was yeah. he was human he was human you know, and the fact that his wife stood behind him even when he was out there stepping out, and it showed that she's just as human as he took well. You know what I'm saying? Um, but she had enough foresight and, and, and love for this man, and not just love for this man, but love for the people to stick it out because she didn't want to disrupt the, the the movement. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of thing to sacrifice your own, you know, your own love and 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 and. and everything else for this man image um I mean well you never know um it probably was just easier to be with him right and then um I don't know relationships are funny that's a whole that's a whole another conversation oh man especially man. when you get married and you got kids and you know it's just I've been together forever <laughs> people be having certain agreements and stuff like I don't know it's just a whole another it's a whole another podcast it's almost like another 
podcast, like someone else's podcast. Yeah, I don't think we're going to touch on that. Like, right, yeah. like, it's not even a whole nother episode, but like a whole nother podcast. podcast. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, With a man and a woman discussing these issues. Right. But, um, I don't know, man. I got great love. I always had great love for Dr. Martin Luther King. I mean, how could you not? That's like the first black person you learned about. (laughs) Yeah, it is. It is. And I love the fact that I learned more about him outside of school. You know what I mean? Because when school came around, he just like kumbaya, man. And I don't think Martin Luther King was such a softy like that. Like they tried to paint him out to be. There was nothing soft about Martin Luther King. Is it okay? We out of school. Yay! I remember them I damn parades, I, though. Them parades yeah, was being long. Yeah, well, Dr. Martin Luther King, like, his mother, he came from hardship. His mother was murdered, assassinated. Right. You know, um, you know they burned his church. It burned his home. Mm. So, like, these men went through the fight in the, the dirtiest of the fight. Same fight that we still fight in today. You know what I mean? They, well, they dealt with police brutality. Young men getting shot, trying to fight for the right to vote. You know what I'm saying? Boy, they trying to boycott. I don't fault nobody for voting. I just want people to think strategically and vote better and vote local. Right. You Imagine know? them trying to boycott. Imagine if Martin Luther King and Michael X said boycott some shit. <laughs> yeah. What if they, yeah, what if they said boycott? Listen, y'all better fucking do it. Boy, if you got caught at H and M and they said boycott H and M. But did somebody find out? If, if somebody took a picture of you and posted it on the internet, look who was at H&M. But the whole community is shun you and they'll find you and whoop your ass. Okay, goddamn. But guess what? H&M gonna do a, a Malcolm X and Martin Luther King uh, clothing line. Are they really? No, I'm just playing. I can see them doing that just to make money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think Martin Luther King was still living here with half of these motherfuckers. He was who, uh, uh, <laughs> McDonald's, everybody that's capitalized off his name. Mm. Yeah. Um, you ever been to the Martin Luther King Center? And, uh, yeah, yeah. I've been to Dr. King. I went to go visit Dr. King. I went to his house. Yeah, I went to his house, too. They, they still have there. it looking just like it's the, like, the 50s or the 60s or something. Right. I remember my dad took us. It was me, my dad, my sister. My little brother and my older brother went with us too. We all went to the first time we went. It wasn't with no uh, school, like, cause I ain't go to school. I went with my family. We went there. And, uh, Y'all better go yeah. living in Atlanta. Yeah, for real, we lived in Atlanta. We lived right down the street from it. Right. So we so we went there. Um, I think my mom had to work, and um, just when my parents were still together. It was a great experience. I remember getting that big ass uh, quarter, or uh, you know, them silver dollars. Oh, I remember those. Yeah, I had that big ass silver dollar with Martin Luther King face on it, and um, I lost it. But uh, I remember <laughs> putting it up in my closet, and somebody took it. I don't know who took it. Somebody took it. One of your siblings. Yeah, one of my siblings took it. Probably Courtney, badass. <laughs> um, but I put it in the closet, but um. We remember going through going through the little fountain and dropping a quarter and and and, and doing a little prayer and all, all the little things kids do when they see ghosts to go up there. Um, it was a great experience. We went to the house, had a tour of the house, mm-hmm. went to the church. You know, um, a lot of but, um, it seemed like I know during the summer that area just be packed. Like as soon as oh, it yeah. starts it's getting that warm. warm. I would say probably right in March. It's just gonna be people there all the time. You always see buses, church groups, field trips, all of them just be looking at the whole the gravesite in the house and the, the church and stuff. I remember Martin Luther King parades. They used to be so long. Oh my gosh. Oh, and I was they in the do. band, so I had to march the whole thing. Who yeah. knows? It used to be a long parade. Yeah, my my nephew got a marching parade down here. I was like, oh my god. Oh, with ROTC? Yeah, with ROTC. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, they do a big guy here in Savannah, so. Yeah, that's the long parade. Cause I mean, I guess Savannah's close to Atlanta, so it would need to do something just as big or you know nice from MLK. But that's the long parade. That is a yeah. long parade. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. I'd be marching like, who oh lord. I mean, like all throughout downtown, from like the east side to the west side. I guess. 
I love them all, but I can't do all this marketing. <laughs> but you know what? I, I don't have no regrets. I, I wouldn't know. take it back in for the world. Especially when they used to see me, like mother and them would see me and they'd be like, hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. I've never been to the parade since my nephew been doing it because uh, I always work. Uh, oh, you should go. Huh? You should go tomorrow. I gotta work. You work at 12. That parade is early in the morning. I don't want to hear that. Oh, if it's early in the morning, I might can't go. Well, that means I gotta start the podcast and go to sleep. We about to end anyway. All right, y'all. It was nice. <laughs> nah, for real though. Um, I wait. I may definitely check it out for my nephew. But um, uh, to give a greeting and farewell, um, we just want to show light and light a candle for Mister, for Doctor Martin Luther King Jr. I mean, his light has never stopped shining. Um. And we definitely appreciate his his contribution to our people. But what kind of contribution can we do that that, that mimic of what he do? You know what I'm saying? What has he left for the people? To, the work that he left for the people. So we still got a long way to go. So what what attributes that do you think people should take away from Martin Luther King? Um, you know, it's a lot. Uh, loyalty to your people. Right. I think that one more than anything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I think I, I feel like he wasn't afraid to grow you know what I'm saying I, you, I saw growth in Martin Luther King from his early speeches to his later speeches you know what I'm saying you have to you have to evolve yeah you know and still stay loyal to your people right yeah you know, I think he put he used to put the people first he went to jail for us you know he he was on the front lines you know he was out there he was he was down yeah. for the cause. Like I said, he was about that life. He was about that life. Well, did you say um, Cornel West is about that life? Yeah, he going to jail numerous times. For- yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying that anyone else isn't. Right. But you know, we speaking on Martin Luther King. Right yeah, we talking about Martin Luther King. Yeah. We talking about Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King. Dr. Martin Luther King. He hit me. I said, I met Martin Luther King. I met Martin Luther King. Hey, 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 with this note, man, uh, we're gonna leave with a little speech word from Dr. Martin Luther King himself. And uh, y'all be blessed out there, man. Uh, be safe and always have love and loyalty like Dr. King for your people. Peace, love, and light to everyone out there. Well, uh, this is the most important and crucial period of your lives for what you do now and what you decide now at this age may well determine which way your life shall go. And the question is whether you have a proper, a solid, and a sound blueprint. And I want to suggest some of the things that should be in your life's blueprint. Number one in your life's blueprint should be a deep belief in your own dignity, your own worth, and your own somebodyness. Don't allow anybody to make you feel that you are nobody. Always feel that you count. Always feel that you have worth. And always feel that your life has ultimate significance. Secondly, 